Welcome physics folk to today's video. In today's video we're looking at year 10 physics, section 2 electricity and our topic is effective resistance. The skill we'll be looking at is calculation of effective resistance from a circuit diagram. So in front of you you can see a circuit diagram which composes of some series components of resistors and some parallel components. What we're trying to do is work out what single resistor can effectively replace the entire circuit shown above. It is recommended that you watch my total resistance video before attempting the following questions. Question number one, calculate the effective resistance, RT, also known as total resistance, for the following circuit. So as you can see, we have a 100 ohm, a 300 ohm, and a 400 ohm resistor in this circuit. And we want to replace that all by one single resistor. So first of all, the question, is it a series or parallel circuit? Well, in this case, it's a series circuit. There is simply one path the charge can follow from the positive terminal of the battery around to the negative terminal. So it's a series circuit. So first of all, let's state the variables. We wish to find the total or effective resistance. So that's equal to question mark. Our first resistor, R1, is 100 ohms. Our second resistor, R2, has a resistance of 300 ohms. And our third and final resistor, R3, has a resistance of 400 ohms. Second step, select the equation. Well, for a series circuit, the total resistance is simply the sum of the three individual resistors. And now we're going to substitute our values in and solve. So RT is equal to 100 plus 300 plus 400. In total, it is 800 ohms. So the effective resistance for this circuit, circuit A, is 800 ohms. Question number two, the same again. Calculate the effective resistance, also known as the total resistance, RT, for the following circuit. The question is, is it a series or a parallel circuit? Well, we can see that this is parallel. As charge leaves the positive terminal of the battery, it reaches a node or a branch or a fork in the road where charge can either go up or down. There's two distinct branches, so this is indeed a parallel circuit. So let's state our variables. We want to know what is the total or effective resistance. The resistance of the first branch of the parallel circuit is R1, and it's equal to 500. And the second resistor, R2, in the second branch is 500 ohms as well. Our equation for a parallel circuit is as follows. The total resistance or the effective resistance is equal to the inverse or the reciprocal of R1 plus the inverse or the reciprocal of R2 all raised to the power of negative 1, which means we're finding the inverse or reciprocal of that bracket. Substitute our values in and solve. So the effective resistance is equal to the inverse of 500 plus the inverse of 500 all to the power of negative 1, which gives me a value of 250 ohms. So the effective resistance for circuit B is 250 ohms. Question three, very similar. Calculate the effective resistance, RT, for the following circuit. Here we have one, two, three branches in parallel, each of value 600 ohms. So question is, is it a series or parallel circuit? We just identified that there are three branches, so this is a parallel circuit. We want to state our variables. RT is a question mark. First resistor, R1 is 600. Second resistor in the second branch, R2 is 600. And the third resistor in the third branch is 600 ohms as well. Our equation is as follows. We substitute in our values and solve. So we can go to the 600s, and that will give us a total or effective resistance of 200 ohms. So the effective resistance RT for circuit C is 200 ohms. Question four, calculate the effective resistance RT for the following circuit. This one's a little more complicated. Is this series or parallel? Well, it's a combination circuit. You can see there are two parallel sections in series. Section A is in parallel, section B is in parallel. Section A, let's do some calculations. Our variables are RT, R1, the first branch is 200 ohm resistor, R2, the second branch is a 400 ohm resistor. That of course is in parallel, so we use the following equation. We sub our values in and we end up with a total or effective resistance for that particular parallel section of 133. So let's replace that in circuit D. So that's been replaced by a single resistor of value 133. Let's now look at section B in parallel. Now the variables for just section B are as follows. We want to find the total or the effective resistance. That's a question mark. The first resistor in branch 1 is 4 kilo ohms. Now we write that down as 4,000 ohms. The second resistor in branch 2 is 8 kilo ohms. We write that down as 8,000 because a kilo represents 1,000 ohms. Select the equation there in parallel. So we'll use the following equation. We substitute our numbers in of 4,000 and 8,000. And we get an effective or total resistance for section B of 2,667 ohms. So that section B is replaced by a single resistor of 2,667 ohms. Now clearly we've got two sections now that can be added in series. So let's combine the two sections in series. 
Again, stating the variables to set this out. Total or effective resistance is our question mark. First resistor is 133 ohms and the second resistor is 2667 ohms. This particular calculation is in series, so we use the following equation and we sub in our values and we end up with a total or effective resistance. So this took many steps to find the total or effective resistance for circuit D, but in them we found it to be 2,800 ohms. Question five, calculate the effective resistance for the following circuit. Is this in series or parallel? Well, we can see it's a combination again, and there is a parallel section in series with the 250 ohm resistor. First of all, section A, here's our parallel section. Let's work out our total resistance for just section A. So we want to know the total resistance. We know the first branch has a resistance of 100 ohms, and the second branch has a resistance of 500 ohms. We select our equations in parallel, so we'll use the following equation. We substitute in our values 100 and 500 into the equation, do our calculation, and we end up with an effective resistance for section A of 83 ohms. So that combination for section A in parallel is replaced by a single 83 ohm resistor. Now we have two resistors in series, so let's combine these two. So again, we state our variables. We want to know what is the total effective resistance for this circuit, RT. R1 is 83 ohms. R2 is 250 ohms. We select the equation while well, it's in series, so we add them together. Put in our values, we sub in and solve. 83 plus 250 gives us a total and effective resistance of 330 ohms. Question six, the effective resistance for the following circuit, circuit F. Is this series or parallel? Well, once again, it's a combination. However, there's a clear series section that's in parallel with a 500 ohm resistor. So here's section A, it's in series. So section A, let's work out the value of this particular section. State the variables. We want to know what's the total resistance of section A. First resistor is 250, the second is 250. These are in series. We simply add them together, R1 plus R2. Put our numbers in, 250 plus 250 gives me a branch resistance here of 500 ohms. And so we replace that combination of series resistors with a value of 500 ohms. Clearly now we have two sections in parallel. Let's state our variables. Let's work out the total resistance. The first branch has got a resistance of 500. Second branch has a resistance of 500. Let's select the equation. Well, they're in parallel. So we'll use the equation as follows. Substitute and solve. Let's sub in our values, 500 and 500. Use our calculators correctly and we end up with a total or effective resistance of 250 ohms. So the effective resistance for, cir for circuit F is 250 ohms. Question seven, calculate the effective resistance for the following circuit. Is this a series or a parallel circuit? Well, once again, this is a combination circuit. There are two series sections in parallel. Section A is in series and section B is in series. Section A with the one kilo ohm and the three kilo ohm, let's work out our total resistance for that section. So we wanna know the total resistance, that's our question mark. The first resistor has a value of one K ohm or 1000 ohms. Second resistor has a value of three kilo ohms or 3000 ohms. The equation we're gonna use is that of a series circuit. We'll substitute our values of 1000 and 3000 in and we end up with a total or effective resistance of 4000 ohms in the top branch. So that series combination can be replaced by a single resistor of value 4000 ohms. Section B, we have two 500 ohm resistors in series. We wanna work out the total resistance for this section. The first resistor is 500, the second resistor is 500. We want to select our equations, they're in series, so we simply add them together. Substitute in our values of 500 and 500, and we find this branch has a total or effective resistance of 1000 ohms. So the 500 and 500 in series adds to give us a single resistor of 1000 ohms. We can now see that we have two resistors in parallel. Let's state our variables. We want to find out what is the overall total resistance for circuit G. The first branch on the top has a resistance of 4000 ohms. The second branch on the bottom has resistance of 1000 ohms. We're using the equation for parallel circuits. As such, we substitute in our values, R1 is 4000 and R2 is 1000. That gives us an effective resistance of 800 ohms. So the effective resistance for circuit G is 800 ohms. Our final question, question eight, calculate the effective resistance for the following circuit. This is the most complex circuit of all the ones we're analyzing in this video. Is this series or parallel? Well, it's definitely a combination. There are two sections that we can simplify, however. Section A, where we have 400 ohms and 400 ohms in parallel, and section B, where we have 200 ohms and 200 ohms in series. So at section A, let's simplify. We're looking to find the effective resistance for section A. We know the first branch has a resistance of 400, R1 equals 400, R2 is 400 as well. Our equation for a parallel circuit is as follows. So to find the total resistance for section A, 
We substitute our values of 400 and 400 for R1 and R2, do our calculations, and we get a total resistance of 200. So the parallel branch, including two 400 ohm resistors in parallel, can be represented as a single 200 ohm resistor. Second branch, which is section B, are in series. Let's work out our effective resistance for these two. So the first resistor R1 is 200, the second resistor R2 is 200. To work out our total or effective resistance, we simply add the two together. 200 plus 200 gives us a total resistance in section B of 400. So the two resistors can be replaced by a single resistor of value 400. Let's combine these two sections in parallel. We want to work out what is the total resistance of this parallel section. The first branch resistor is 200, R1, and R2, the second branch resistor, is 400 ohms. We want to select the correct equation. This section is to do with parallel circuits, so we use the following total resistance equation. We now substitute in our values for R1 and R2, and we determine that parallel branch has a total resistance of 133 ohms. So the two parallel branches can be replaced by a single resistor of value 133 ohms. Our final step, let's combine these two sections which are in series. So we want to find out what's the overall effective resistance RT of this circuit. The first resistor has a value of 133 ohms, the second a value of 500. We select the equation for series resistors, which is simply RT equals R1 plus R2. We substitute our values for R1 and R2, and we find the effective resistance for this circuit, circuit H, to be 633 ohms. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed and indeed learned something from this video, please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.